<laughs> Not up for it. <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, we're just gonna skip right to it. It's over. My oh. poor goose. Yeah, this goose needs. <laughs> this goose needs a lot of tender, loving care after uh, this past goose week. Needs, goose needs like... medication. Oh. Goose needs a lot of medication and a lot of sleep. <laughs> yeah. So, hello, everybody. Well, Dennis, did you like when I uh, sent you a messenger? Get some sleep. Medicate up. Yep, hydrate, which I've been doing. Hydrate until you're pissing clear. <laughs> oh, I've been doing that for days now. Yeah, I'll say this much. Um, um, uh, first off, um, let's just do this disclaimer there. If you're under 13, um, so you don't want to hear Get what the I'm hell out. Say. Yeah. Just say because uh, COVID's a fucking bitch. This is by adult. This is for adults by adults who don't act like adults. If you're under 13, get assholes. Yeah, yeah. And if you're also a COVID, okay, okay. Yeah, that's excessive. <laughs> what the hell? That's called feedback, boys and girls. Ow. You know feedback. No, it's my little buddy. Yeah, uh, that's your little buddy. Okay. You know. I'm, I'll try to be nice there, but you know, this week has sucked, and I don't know uh, how much more I'm going to have to okay. stay cooped up here. For those of you tuning into the stream, first of all, welcome to another day of Living City Rose Stuff. For those of you who are tuning into the stream, Dennis got hit by the bug. Yep. I there you go, you can I check out You can check out what the little buddy looks like if you look at the picture. Oh. Oh, baby Yoda. Oh, that's cute. He likes nuggy nugs and chalky yeah, moo juice. Mm, yeah. Chicky yeah. nuggy nugs and chalky moo juice. Yeah, Chucky Moo Moo Juice. Yep, absolutely. Chucky Moo Moo Juice. Oh, I want it. It actually talks? Oh, yes. No, oh, no, <laughs> Terry really wants it. No, no, hey, I'm babe, gonna have, gonna Perfect have to, anniversary gift. You're going to have to fight me for it. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, I can fight. Don't worry about that. Uh, okay, anyway, uh, today's module, as we hear Baby Yoda uh, talking in the background, LCRB 12-9, Dawning of a New Day, originally written by David Samuels. And the blurb... Da, da, da. You are summoned to the roost regarding a matter of great importance. Further details will be provided when you arrive. An event is recommended for adventure characters levels 14 to 16. This module will cost one day unit. And yes, this is a night approved module. <coughs> and it and if baby Yoda don't shut up, I'm gonna shove a late saber right to this point of your No, no, oh, hey. oh, hey, 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 hey. You cannot abuse the child. Girlfriend Vita is that one big time. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> God damn. Well, oh, I know. <laughs> Think about the surprise. Backwards, I'm going to sleep. Uh, as we begin today's module, there has been a step up in Tanari sighting. Oh, lovely. Last week or so, it's been, you know, this. No, let's say there's no more than one or two sightings a week. Well, in the last week or so, there's been six or seven sightings. 
So it's like been tripled. But as it begins today, for the first time in the last couple months, it is a beautiful morning in Ravensbluff. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, and there isn't a cloud in the sky. Not only that, it's warming up. You're pretty sure that winter is almost over. Put it this way, guys. Guess what the temperature is down here in Pensacola right now? Uh, if you're gonna, well, actually, I mean, we were in the 60s today here in Indiana. So I cannot complain about the temperature. I'm going to have to guess you guys were in the 80s or 90s, babe? No, not 90s. Not yet. Uh, right now, actually, let me refresh this. Okay, right now in Pensacola, 77 degrees. Oh, that's not bad. Nice. Yo, nice. Uh, wind out of the south. Not too, not too cloud. It's a little bit cloudy, but not too bad. Oh, we've been waiting for this after those nights in the twenties and teens. <laughs> and remember, it's, we ain't used to that stuff. Okay, so anyway, it's fifty. I never right thought now. I would say this, but for those four days that we were without heat or electricity, mm -hmm. oh God, I had to suck. I didn't even have a freaking hot flash. I missed them. <laughs> I welcomed them back gracefully okay. when we got power back. I, 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 I would have enjoyed the cold weather because remember when I was in South Power last year after Hurricane Sally, mm. it was in early to mid September. Yeah. yeah. Remember that down here. It is, um, that's kind of the uh, heart of us. 90, it is 93 degrees with 93% humidity oh, from, mid, from mid May through mid October. That's gonna suck. That's why God created air conditioning. Yep. <laughs> okay, so, anyways, uh, with the Tanari sightings. Um, they are kind of keeping that on the QT to most of the regular. Give <laughs> it, guys. Uh, Very little sleep. Um, until Mr. and Mrs. Joe Blow on the street, they really don't worry about the uh, Tanari stuff because nobody told them. Of course not, but it, I mean, if it hasn't killed a uh, citizen of the city, they, and then they don't have to know. Yeah. Children and adults alike are laughing and playing in the street. Everyone that you've seen seems to be more energetic as usual. <laughs> they're, try they're trying to um, lose all that winter fat. <laughs> The sun's rays beating down on you while warming are not uncomfortable. From all indications, it looks like it might be a pleasant day in the city. Your thoughts are interrupted, however, by the sounds of someone in metal armor coming towards you. Clank, clank, clank. Clank, clank, clank. Uh, <laughs> As you look, you notice a young man in glistening metallic armor heading in your direction. He is immaculately and impeccably dressed, his metallic armor glistening in the sunlight, and emblazoned on the breastplate of his armor is a rooster. Ah, yes. Gotta keep up appearances. Gotta, gotta say hello to the chicken knights. <laughs> They're not chicken knights. My mom started out uh, with the uh, roosters. Well, 
Let me guess, you're not crazy, your mother had you tested? <laughs> Remember, babe, he thinks he's Sheldon when we all know you're Sheldon. I am Sheldon. I am a new I know. Hey, that makes me Amy. Mm-hmm. Okay, anyways, um... <laughs> He, uh, the young man, you, we are all in different areas of the city right now, but the young man will greet you by name and say that he needs to talk to you, uh, he needs you to talk to you, you about a very important matter. Uh, you will notice that he has a concerned look on his face. Uh... He uh, may well give different names. One is Gregory Ashton, but they are all Knights of the Golden Rooster. And you are informed that your presence is requested, not required, requested at the roost for a breakfast meeting with the Century Marshal. All right. And he will say that it has something to do with the safety of the city. So I take it we're all going to the roost? Of course. Yep. Well, we all arrive in a few minutes of each other at about 8 a.m. or so. Oh, hi, guys. Gee, so many requested me to come to a meeting about the safety of the city. Why am I not surprised to see you guys here, too? Because we were all requested. Yeah. So, um, of course, Declan is, uh, like, can, um, we get on with this? I'm supposed to be getting married tomorrow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everything all yep, set, yep. ready to go? Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Well, we don't have, well, uh, I don't think they had a flower girl in mind, but everything else they got figured out. Who's actually doing uh, the ceremony, Nina? Um, <laughs> probably his sister. Probably Kira, or his mom. His mom could do it. Yep, she's still in town. So, his wife well, is uh, it's two to be anyway. That she's probably showing pretty good because that kid's gonna be born in July. <laughs> she definitely has a baby bump. Heck, all you need is a mobile home and you got a wedding down here in Pensacola. Mm. <laughs> I, and if my grandmother had wheels, she'd be a wagon. Uh -uh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you are met by a middle-aged woman who introduces herself as Morica Denman. She is the assistant to Sentry Marshal Moon. The Sentry Marshal is waiting for you in her office, and she offers to lead you there. Sure. Uh, you're shown into the office. A beautiful, blonde-haired human woman looks up from behind a stack of papers. She will introduce herself as Sentry Marshal Dawn of the Desert Moon, that name sounds really familiar. Yeah, didn't we kind of... Uh, that is Mirko's daughter. You remember the Mirko's, the horse trader? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's his daughter. We've met her before. We have. We just didn't know that she became a knight and rose pretty damn quickly. Obviously. It's in the 
Very <laughs> obviously. And hello, Ben, my old friends. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you. I wish I could say that I brought you here under pleasant circumstances, but alas, I cannot. Excuse me, where are my manners? Uh, I invited you here for a breakfast meeting. So let's have breakfast. <laughs> Once you're finished with breakfast, we can talk. That way, if you decide you don't wish to take the mission, at least you'll have a good meal on me. Okay, guys, for breakfast, consisting of assorted juices, eggs, meat, your choice of ham, bacon, sausage, or steak, or all of the above. Oh, absolutely all of the above. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, potatoes, either diced and, uh, you know, diced up and fried up, or hash browns. <laughs> oh, good lord. Both. Fresh, fresh baked rolls, and your choice of beverage. And for dessert, your choice of freshly baked apple, blueberry, or strawberry pies. Remember, she's the Marcos' daughter. She's, she's from the desert. They know how to put out a spread. Oh, absolutely. You absolutely. Okay. Um, guys, give me about a minute or so. I'm going to go ahead and refill my water glass. I will be right back. I got to fill my water bottle, too, so I'll be back. Got to probably put a couple bottles of water in the uh, fridge there. So I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be here. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Hello. You're just going to torment that with... <laughs> just had a seizure. All right, I'm back. Oh, welcome back. I guess you're just going to torment me with that, aren't you? Nobody torments a goose, especially when he feels bad. Because <laughs> I want it to. <laughs> <laughs> he snores when he sleeps. Oh, oh. Uh, seriously? <laughs> yeah, I'll see if I get him to sleep. Here's a seat.
those cases if you wanted to buy it and talk yourself out of it. it happens. I do it all the time. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I'm back. Yeah, welcome back. I had to do a few extra things, but got to take care of. Okay. Chris is tormenting Dennis. Yeah, he, yeah, he's tormenting me here. Uh, permission to die is approved. <laughs> Not to worry, I will murder him if I need to. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta catch me first. <laughs> God damn it. So. Anyways, uh, you eat and you eat well. And I mean, we're talking good, uh, you know, type oh. of good old burp type. <laughs> yeah, oh, good little belt, you know, that, yeah, yeah, you're stuffed. You know, a minute, a minute on the lip, so we kind of hips. <laughs> Honey, for me, it's a lot longer <laughs> than <laughs> like, um. <laughs> I must and, uh, of course, you know, um, Jacqueline taunting, uh, Sakura, you know, well, it really just starts taunting Declan, you know, I hope you ate, I hope you ate good, you know, your wedding's tomorrow and a condemned man should have a good last meal. Uh, yep. <laughs> That's uh, what I've heard. <laughs> uh, once the uh, dishes are cleared away and all the belching is done, <laughs> and, and the farting, um, um, dawn of the desert moon will begin. I have received information. Information that which is true indicates dark times ahead for the city. I would like you to verify this information for me. And what information now, might that be? Well, before I continue, I need to ask each of you to promise me that what I'm about to tell you will stay just between us. It will. If this news gets out, it could frighten the residents of the city and possibly start a panic. Of course. Okay. The information that she's received is that a band of demons has recently infiltrated the city. The demons are planning uh, to unleash waves of destruction against the city. Destruction on a scale that the city has not uh, ever seen before, not even during the war, or even with those elemental terrorists of Circle of Four around. By the way, Dave Samuels wrote the Circle of Four modules. Nice. <laughs> this information, however, has not been verified. So and if you would like to verify it. Don't see that being a problem. She doesn't really expect you to deal with the Tanari or the demons. Although she does know that several <laughs> city adventurers would not have a problem with them. Namely, one guy named Black Mano, namely, one head of the Alchemist Guild, oh. um, such like so forth, so on. Some one guy who's a just happens to be a chosen a laugh ender. <laughs> so, although he doesn't hang around the city much anymore, he's out in the outer plains hanging with his boss. Okay. Um. She does not want you to take any unnecessary risk with your lives or any lives in the city. To be on the safe side, she has increased both the strength and frequency of the Golden Rooster Patrols. That's a proper caution. The source told her that she should begin her investigation 
at the glittering Stardust Inn. This inn is the same place where the Symposium of Mages was held. Oh, I remember that. That was a... If you remember uh, Impendent Symposium? I do. It was a kind of an interesting little uh, event. Uh, and, mm. and pray forgive me for asking there, but um, so where is this? Who is this supposed source? Even I'm curious. She cannot divulge okay. that source to, to protect them. Right. Uh, but in other words, first of all, uh, first uh, of all no, no, no. if you should ask for it, she will, of course, give you a writ or papers saying that you are go uh, working for the Golden Roosters. Fair enough, then. Then, but of course, uh, out of character, um, I would say, uh, holy cow! We're all thirteenth level, right? Uh, last I yeah. And she is willing to pay you. And before any nights and uh, start saying, oh, you know, I can't accept payment. Hey, this is a knighthood paying you. You can accept payment. Yes. Very well. Of course, all sources of the New York Times. And she is really <laughs> she is going to pay each of you six thousand five hundred gold pieces. I like that. Wow. And what that is that's five hundred times APL. And is that five hundred five hundred times thirteen? And that's uh, split amongst all of us, or? Oh, that's each. Wow. 6,500 each. You're making bank this mod. What in Stardust? I don't think I've heard of that particular uh, establishment. The Glittering Stardust. Um is actually located um it's a rather simple looking room uh, looking at this i would say it is probably in the temple district actually sorry merchant district it is located in the merchant district uh, as uh, so you t you're taking the job and you're on your way there, correct? Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> well, on your way there, you notice that the people of the city seem to be enjoying both the weather and the apparent peace that the city seems to be enjoying. I can't believe Dave wrote this into a bill. Oh, I've got to hear this. Excuse me while I read this verbatim. You also notice several city guardsmen, each walking with a box of donuts. Good lord. You know, if I make a donut shop in this city there, I could probably retire. Yeah. Actually. You know cops and donuts, honey. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> That is a, that is an um, investment opportunity for Aurelia. <laughs> so anyway, she does have a sweet tooth. Uh, about two hours after the meeting started. The meeting started about eight a.m. It's about ten a.m. or so right now. Okay. When you reach the glittering Stardust Inn, you notice that it's a rather simple looking inn. 
And when you go inside, you notice that there's a young woman of average build with fair complexion standing behind the front desk. She is finishing signing in a young lady. She then rings a bell and a man in a red uniform steps forward, picks up the woman's belonging, and starts leading her away. Um, hi there. Welcome to the Rings 10. My name is Dorian Dorn. How many rooms do you need? Mm -hmm. Alright, here we go. I don't know about these guys, but one for me. <laughs> um, I'll take a room. I'll take a room. Okay. Um, uh, let's see, the rooms. Um, they, she has two rooms available for rent on, for, uh, on a long-term basis for 25 gold per month. It's actually, uh, if you need them, we could provide a cert for the room, a.k.a. cert of living quarters. The, uh, they would be 25 gold, 25 gold per mod for a room on the second floor, common area, and 75 gold per mod for rooms up on the fourth floor. Um, and, of course, you know, we're here to get information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She doesn't really, because she's chatty, and she's vibrant and bubbly. She's an airhead. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's very talkative. She likes when people stay at the end because it means that people around she can talk to. <laughs> this woman is a freaking ditz. Um, she just ran out of the room to the young lady. She just uh, she now you said her name is Miriam, and she's visiting visiting from Zambia. She also ran out of room a ten day ago to two men. The men told her they were here to check on the Temple of Mistra as they were thinking about starting a temple in Tantras. Hey, you look like a Mistra and you maybe can talk to them. He's certainly uh, interesting to The men didn't look like the priestly types, but she didn't question them about it. Hmm. She has learned from her time in the city that many people do not convey the appearance of the work they claim to do. And the men gave their names as Augustine and Romaladan. Hmm. Augustine was a thin, middle-aged man, about six foot one, dark brown hair, brown eyes. Romaladan is short, fat, and balding. He has blue eyes and hair, and the hair that he does have is blonde. Uh, she rented out a room two days ago to an old man and his daughter and son-in-law. The old man and his family said they were visiting from Procamper. The woman is 5'8", 140, auburn hair, brown eyes, about 25. Her husband, 6'3", 200, dirty blonde hair and blue eyes, late 20s. And the old man appears to be in his late 70s. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, she, since she is a busybody and is nosy as all hell, if you ask her and let her know where you will be, uh, if any of these people return, Uh, and she did say, well, I heard them say they need to see some important people in the city. Um, uh, and if we're, no, we're, we're trying to get what information we have. So she will tell you that the two men are staying in room four on the second floor, just past the common sleeping quarters, and the family is sleeping in room ten, up on the fourth floor. 
Yeah, of course, we rented rooms, so we can go upstairs by ourselves. Okay. So, yeah, guys, we can check out these rooms where other people are staying. Yeah. Just remember, we're snooping. I'm good at snooping, you know that. Mm -hmm. So. Part of the job. So. The <laughs> first one, room number four up on the second floor. It is locked, Tarana. And this is the one with the uh, two gentlemen that report yes. to the mysteries. Yes. Okay, well. Okay. Maybe I can give you a hand with that. Too. So shall I do a perception check? Oh, okay. uh, you can do a perception check if you want to check for traps. Um, it is not trapped. Yeah, she gets a 28. Sakura gets a 50. <laughs> Yeah. Gee. There are no traps on this door or anywhere in a two mile radius, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but it is locked. Yeah, it's... So I'll unlock it. <laughs> Sticky snick. Yeah. You picked that door and the we door in the two mile radius. Yes. Oh, okay. oh, come on. Uh, with a 46, it shouldn't be, the, uh, be a one mile radius. Hey, you find oh. that door. Okay. All right, jump in. Uh, I'm looking That's why the, you have me. The following The room is immaculate. Oh, so the men who are staying here checked in over a week ago. There is no clothing in either the closet or the drawers. There is a notepad on the desk in the room. Uh, make me a perception check. Somebody. Uh, somebody. Yeah. Yeah, that's 50. Well... There's nothing on the pad, but you can see the impression that something had been written. Mm. As in, you know the old trick, right? Uh -huh. Play your hand at one. You put a piece of paper on there, over the top of it, and you rub it with a... Uh, yes. With charcoal. Pencil. And, yeah. Yep. And in that case, guess what, guys? Uh-huh. Player hand out one. Go and player hand out one. Um, and I read over it, I read over it, and then I see the very last line there, and it's like, Oh, shit. No, she's barely containing her rage at this point. Calm okay. down. And with that one, you then search a restroom, and inside the desk is a piece of crumpled parchment. Player handout number two. Two. Uh, let's hold on. This one's a little small. Please remember that we need to stop by. Uh. Okay. So between one um, and instead of Thoden, um, Let's see here. Right. 
you. Thank you for. Oh, you're welcome. Instead of saying they should read Gordon, T O R D O N. And of course, uh, we know who Torden is. Torden Fairblade. Um, so it looks like they're going after a member of the DeVillis family. Um, it looks like they're going after everybody. Your high priest, Chapter the Mark. Rulon Dayspring, the head of the clerical circle. And toward and sure blade. Yeah, but the question is, how are they going to get all these people together in one place? I mean, so obviously, they're going to attempt to try to poison these individuals. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, if you go up and check on the fourth floor, in room number 10, this is a very spacious room. Two beds, large closet, dresser, and a desk. Beds are made, although the one furthest from the door appears to have someone in it. Um, sneaking around, you find... A couple things. Uh, what sort of things? Uh, first of all, the old man of the family is in a bed sleeping. Um, you also find a crumpled up piece of page parchment on the desk. Welcome to what Terry says is very evil. Player handout number three. Hey, you uh, said it was evil when you talked to me this morning. <laughs> oh, this is in code. Now, I'm going to make this easy and quick on you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need nine knowledge local checks. Well, this one's all on you, Talana. Got it. Not a problem. Okay, made it. Nah. Made it. Well, the answers themselves there, there at the bottom, are pretty easy. Okay, Declan made the first two, Toronto made it, Declan made that one, okay, that's five, six, three more. And I'm just looking oh, at them, uh, I'm just looking at them, uh, looking through this there, and it's like, Eight. Darn. One more. And there we go. That's nine. Okay. The DC guys was ten. Okay. Our location is currently the city of Raven's Bluff. Duh. The chief relay of the city is Dayspring. Uh. Um, she's the most influential woman. Uh, the others. The tax man cometh. Who is he? Uh, that would be Vernon Condor. Would, yeah. Former yep. mayor of Raven's Bluff. Ah, Charlie O'Kane. O'Kane, yes. He is Tears' right hand. Form. Yep. He is the god of justice. Yeah. People believe these people believe that donuts are their life. <laughs> the city watch, yes. City watch. Four letters slash five letters. Uh -huh. City watch. And the goddess of magic. Of course, Mistra. Okay. 
Now, having gotten that, you would have all the, pretty much all the letters needed to decipher the message. Yep. And the message deciphers as follows. Okay. Dearest William and Ruby, you need to make sure that nothing goes wrong with the plan. Once the plan has begun, it will only be a matter of time before Our Lady, the one true God, visits the city. She has pledged that once she has done her visitation, we may rule the city in her name. You have your targets, as do I. May the blessing of Talona be upon us. Mom. Okay. So, looks like these people are up to no good. No, obviously not. Obviously not. So, I think we need to go... <laughs> Uh, warn the people uh, yep. of what we found, aka we can go to the Temple of Mistra, we could go to the Temple of Torm, the Temple of Tyr, uh, Temple of Tempest, Joaquin, yep. Lathander. Uh, wouldn't it be easier just to go straight to the clerical circle and then uh, they can uh, warn the other Yeah. Side? Personally, I think yeah, it would be. Uh, with the long... well, this way. So going to the clerical circle. Um. Then again, okay, so you want to go to the Temple of Lysander then? Yeah, we can yep. start there, there, start raising the alarms here because, because we know we're largely a direct target there. Okay, going over to the Temple of Lathander, you are met by Angela, a priestess of Lathander. When you ask to see Chief Prelate Dayspring, she will ask, are you initiates too? And we have <laughs> this here with the was a woman who has a holy symbol of Mistra around her neck. Do we look like initiates? Thanks. <laughs> um, she will tell you that two men claim to be new initiates to the order stopped by the temple early this morning. They spoke with Lord Dayspring briefly and wanted a longer meeting, but when is it, well, he was unable to fit them into a schedule this morning. He is planning on meeting with the two men over dinner at the Shark Fin tonight. Um, so my and if you ask uh, for a description of the men, yeah, they pretty much give you the, she gives you the description that fits. Augustine and Romilidan. We need to get over there as soon as we can. Yep. Okay. Um... As you're making your way from the uh, temple district down to the uh, dot down to the docks, um, you can hit the following locations. First of all, you'll be able to stop at the Temple of Mistra. 
Okay, Lord DeMarc, um, he left early this morning with two men who claimed to the temple, claimed to be initiates from Tantris. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we, all, we have evidence to believe they are part of a yeah. plot against and, the And uh, the two men, she asked, you asked the acolyte there to give a description. I uh, guess you yes. then... <laughs> Um, I think one of them is my she, uh, she also notices that a young couple, a man and a woman, she, she also showed up at the temple looking for the Lord of Mystery. Uh, they appear to be a little upset that Lord DeMarc was not at the temple. And the description of the couple matches that of Ruby and William, the old man's children. Great. Uh. There's um, uh, one of the places I think is right next door to my place. Right. Yes, O'Kane's house. Yeah, I'll I'll go in and grab it. Um, when you go to Deputy O'Kane, uh, the former Lord Mayor O'Kane's office. Uh, his assistant will, of course, ask if you have an appointment. Uh, he is not in right now. He is expected to stop back later on tonight. Or early in the morning before his breakfast meeting at the Shark Fin. Oh, that's, that's the meeting, the meeting at the Shark Fin is with two men. And he also has a meeting with a young couple. Scheduled for tomorrow afternoon Man, over crazy. lunch at the Sleepy Dwarf. Hmm. That's where and, yeah, if you describe Augustine, Ramilla, Dan, William, and Ruby, yeah, those are the people. But he's apparently not going to be, uh, okay. Uh, if you like, you can stop at his uh, courthouse. Um, you'll meet with Tord on Shoreblades, Kirk, Clerk, um, Torden's not here, a young couple showed up at the courthouse this morning, um, and description of the couple, William and Ruby, of course, um, they found Torden, who wasn't busy, and convinced him to meet with him for a few moments. And that's the last anybody ever saw of him. Can we make a rest as knights? Mm. Uh, that's a good question. If city, put it this way, if city citizens are in danger, you have the right to defend them. That is true. Yep. That's <clears throat> So officially our duty there, so. Okay. so we just need to go arrest these two or four people. Yep. Yep. Well, you know they're probably going to be going to the shark fin. We'll try. Can we get, can we get any other men? Well, um, let me just say this. Um, you come back out of the, um, of the meeting with, uh, Torn and Shoreblade's assistant, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and, da, da, da. and so we've got company. Yeah. And we got, we teleported into a, a cathedral. <laughs> no, this is a courtroom. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Kind of looks like that. Okay. So, 
They are, they are wearing, I guess you could call it half plate. They are, they each have great swords. So, at this opportunity, boys and girls, we I get to roll like to say, we roll roll your initiative. Oh, yeah. That's not bad. That's 23. You want me to roll separate initiative for Kira or just have all of them go when I go? No. Roll separate initiative for Kira. Okay. Uh, looks like the car is going before me. <laughs> Oh, excuse me, guys. Oh, You're excused, hey. babe. There are eight bad guys. And exactly what are these things, babe? They're fighters, types, uh, thugs, uh, human types. Oh, you mean the type I can kick an ass and kill? Oh, you may do murder machine all you wish. Thank you, Daddy. Okay, here we go. Fourteen. Oh four. Ten dot oh four. No, that was a nat one. Five dot oh four. Because of that nat one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Twelve dot oh four. Six dot oh four. The natural two. Yep. Fifteen dot oh four. Eight dot oh four, and the final one nineteen dot oh four. So he's a little bit speedy. Just a little okay. bit, huh? Just a touch. Um, Aurelia's initiative. <laughs> And Morova's initiative. 14.02. Okay. I can tell you right now. Ooh. Kira almost went before that guy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, fifteen dot oh four. Hey, uh, by the way, did you uh, watch uh, Tom and Jerry there? Oh, I just watched it yesterday and loved it. Oh, nice. Yeah, the, the new Tom and Jerry movie? <laughs> yep. <laughs> apparently it opened with uh, 13.7 million, apparently. Yeah, so, not bad. 
I loved it. Oh. Then again, I love Tom and Jerry. <laughs> no, honey, I don't love the cat more than I love you. You're a hell of a lot cuter than the cat. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Takura Tawana, uh -huh. Declan Aurelia, Kira, and then we start moving the robot up. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Sakura Tolana T8. Declan Aurelia T6 and 1. Kira and Marova. And then the rest of the T's. Yep. Okay, boys and girls. Sakura. Slicey dicey time. Going first. <laughs> Okay, well, um, let's say T7 seems to be uh, writing a nice little line there, so I need to keep practice on this. But I am going to shoot him a couple times. <laughs> All right, how about a 26, an 18, and a 21? Uh, those will all hit. Alright, and let's see what that last number is there. For some reason it cuts it off. Uh, for 15, I think that might be 20. Uh, that last number is a 5. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, 20 damage then. Not a bad start. 20 damage to T7. Trilana, if you so wish, you can go up, make one single attack, but you will get sneaky dice. Love, love, love. And we already know what I'm using. Oh, and a crit on the sneaky dice. Oh, Jesus. 18, 28, 38. 40. 40 points of damage. Um, is he a shish kebab? No, he's still alive. Ooh. But he's also pleading seven. He didn't like that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't like it either. <laughs> but I do love dispensing pain, baby. Let's see what this jackass does to me. This way, he needs a 20. Didn't get it. <laughs> Declan! <laughs> Yep, I'm going to start with T6. All right. I will say that you had time to cast Slime as usual, so. Uh, okay. Uh, those all hit. So, let me total up the damage. 8, 12, 15, 17, 27, 28, 29, 31, 36, 46, uh, 50, 52, 57, uh, 67, 69, 75, 83. Are you hasting? Uh, okay, let me, 83, yeah, okay, the hasted attack can go on somebody else because the rapid shot killed that one. Sweet. Uh, the one that she sneak, sneak attack out, 
Okay, D7. Uh, and he will take 14, 18, 19 points of damage. Okay. So, he's looking pretty bad, but believe it or not, he's still up. Hi, sis. Okay, I'm back. So no attack. Okay. Oh wow. That's that is sixteen points of damage to this one. We had three left. Draft. Um cleaving finish. And to this one we'll hit for nineteen. Okay. T one <laughs> is going to start making a move up. Okay. He needs yeah, it's not twenty. Okay. Kira. If I do it right here, that'll get all three of them, right? Yes. Flame strike or firestorm? Uh, where is she at? Ouch. So they all need to make reflex saves. Yep. Okay, the DC is 20. Made it. One save. That's a fail. And that's a fail. Okay. So, T3 made it. He will take half damage, which will be 23. The other two will take full damage, which is 47. Ow. That's a good start on it. Okay. Morova. Well, Morova. Is. Yeah, the three that you just damaged. Sorry, Torn. Gonna... Sorry, Torn, for messing up your uh, courtroom. But oh well. Oh, you're not going to do what I think you're about to do, are you? I think so. <laughs> and it was, this one will also grab T4 in it. Okay. So. That's a make. That's a miss. That's a <clears throat> Are we even allowed to cast these spells in the city? Uh, uh, technically, no. Yeah, but we got we got a rip from the knights. So let us do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So he takes fifteen. Um,
It doesn't take any of them down, but God, it takes uh, two of them to near death. And 15 on that one. Okay. They didn't like that. T4. Of Charge Herrera. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you will not start with utility. That's a miss. T2. Actually, I'm sorry. That's T4 who came down there. Ah. Charge. Whoa. T2 will charge. That was from... banana. <laughs> Don't make me run my toothbrush. Exercise and futility. Yeah. Um. You're okay if I take two slices. T5. He'll be able to sneak in here. That's a miss. And finally, T3. Uh, yeah, you'll be able to double oh. charge in and. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at that, indeed. Yeah. Okay, that's a miss. Okay. Sakura. Uh-huh. There's yeah. a nice grouping for you. Yeah, and there's a uh, nice little Holy Smite and Power going off. Now you can... Yeah, if, yeah, if you're good aligned... You don't have to worry about this. Well, Which... let me just take Tolana. I think Tolana is. I think we've established that. I'm double checking. I'm opening up her character sheet. She's chaotic good. Oops. Okay. Holy Smite, huh? Uh-huh. Empowered Holy Smite. <laughs> and that okay. Is... Oh my god. These poor bastards. Um, yeah. Okay, ready? Uh-huh. So, 48 save for half. Uh, it's, well, if they're evil outsiders. Oh, oh sorry, 34 save for half, right? right? Right. And, of course, it's a will save or be blinded as well. Yeah. No, okay. Okay, they need we'll choice. Go, we'll go right down the line here. Okay. 34. Um, okay. <laughs> Yay, seventy two. Okay, damage and blind. Damaged and dead. Even better. Damaged and dead. Yeah, good lord, Tom. <laughs> okay. Are you trying to take my fun away from me? <laughs> oh, not really. They're all going to be blind, so they're all going to get sneakies. Yay! I'm just looking to slice and dice. 
From the top of the head to the tips of the toes. And all points in between. Damaged and blind. They have a plus. They have a plus two on their save. Damaged and blind. And the last one. God, these guys suck. Yep. All right. The good news is they're all blind. Yes, they are. Which means, Torlana. Yeah, you can sneak it out. to my decks. If you take care of T1 and T5, I will take care of the other two. They ought to be dead from me shooting them. Yeah. Okay. Torlana. Go ahead and attack. Yeah. do it real. Am I? I was just take about care. to ask you. You know that. Take care of T1 and T5. And since they're blind, you get sneaky dice. Yay. Okay. Uh, 25 will hit. Um, that's 9 and 28 for sneak. Um, so 28 and 9 is 37. Okay, so he's still alive. And he's bleeding 7. Okay. Is the second attack going on the same guy? Yeah. Then it doesn't even matter because he's freaking dead. <laughs> the third guy... Um, AC 18 and they lost Dex, yes. Um, so that will hit for 25 and 8, which is 33. And he's bleeding 7 because the sneak attack hit. And then your second attack will hit. And kill him. Okay. Um, T8 is going to try to hit you because you're not like anybody dressed in armor like your person next to you. And they'll miss you badly. Declan? I rolled. All right, let's see what we get. The first arrow hit. Not my fault. I like studded leather. <laughs> Hold on, let me see what kind of damage you got here. The first arrow hits. Eleven, sixteen, twenty. Okay, he's still up. Seventy-three. All right, the second male misses. But the third arrow will kill this guy. The rapid shot will hit, and he had 10 hit points left, so he's dead. Okay. In searching their bodies, you do find that one of them was carrying a potion of Cure Series Wounds. Hmm. 
uh, each of them had 20 gold, as well as the address of a warehouse in the merchant district, and a room key from the glittery Stardust Inn. And what room would that be? Uh, that, I believe, would be, uh, let me see here, if it says it. Um, let's see. Let's see where the room is going to be. Okay. Uh, not sure. There's no, um, I mean, it does have a little thing literally started this in, but doesn't have a room number on it. Hmm. Common room, perhaps. Sounds like a master key, almost. Okay. So, um,. When you finally make it to the shark fin, uh, right off the bat, you know, they got Torn and Shoreblade, they got Chester to Mark. You check the other people on the list on your way to the shark fin, they have not gotten them yet. So you alert their guards and such like and so forth and save their lives. Okay? Okay. Yeah, they, you said they haven't arrived yet? Uh, it doesn't look like they've arrived yet. Maybe we should clear, like, common patrons out or make space just in case things get ugly because we're going to plan an arrest. Well, the reason you're coming to the shark fin is that you're supposed to meet somebody named Martha. Isn't this also, though, where they're going to be having breakfast? Uh, yeah, but that's tomorrow. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 Yep, yep. Okay, let's go get some bacon. Okay. <laughs> bacon, bacon. Bacon, bacon. Mackie cheesy. All right. And chicken nuggies. Okay. Uh, there are other people in here. Two dwarves named Hammer Throw Stone and Mace Crusher. Obviously, very drunk. Obviously. Um, three elves, Galen, Thorn, and Orlin. Um, let's see, red herring. <laughs> red herring again? Uh, yeah, they are discussing how to overthrow the Lord Mayor. And, yeah, you'll get a fame point. And uh, you can actually turn them into City Watch, and you'll get an extra fame point, in Lord Mayor. Yes, well, in that case, uh, beautiful woman, muscular human, DBF or BDF, big dumb fighter, a human couple uh, by the name of Ramsey and Beulah. Beulah. They are talking about how hard it is to try to find a husband for Beulah's younger sister, Bertha. And they will talk to um, any 
male in the um any male in the bar about hey uh we've got a sister named Bertha who's looking for a husband interested and she will go and she will they will come up to Marova and ask him and he will of course reply only if she can enjoy me and un join me and leave my undead yeah. horde. <laughs> um, but, Declan! <laughs> That's not happening. <laughs> you want to make it a triple wedding? Sure. <laughs> you want to marry Bertha? Along oh, with no. your... No, Bertha was the, um... She's not horribly... Comely, right? She's not horrible. Well, I think of uh, Big Bang Theory. Amy uh, Fairfather when she first met Sheldon. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> kind so of frumpy, kind of frumpy. I am not frumpy. She'd make, no. she'd make a good nursemaid. I'm adorable. Does she have birth and hips? <laughs> yes, she does. You know, that's actually where the bell <laughs> came into play, though. Because families would have guys courting the good-looking sister, and on the wedding day, they'd marry the homely sister off to the guy that was courting the gorgeous sister. Okay. Bertha <laughs> is a plain looking woman, not beautiful, but plain looking, who is looking for a husband that she can make happy. She will not accompany her husband on a mission, preferring to look after her husband's interests instead. And she does have a dowry which will be given to you of three hundred dollars or three hundred gold. <laughs> Uh, Up to you. I think it's, I I I tell her, you know, that Morova's looking for a wife. Only if she will uh, join his undead horde. And only if she will join and lead my undead horde. Oh, that's just rude. That's just Morova. <laughs> What's the Marion? Hey, it's Morova. What do you expect? Morova finds undead. Better than most humans. How many times has Morova tried to get me to join his undead horde when I'm sick? Same here. You're not feeling good? Really? Is it terminal? <laughs> Shut up. Okay. I still do have that one spell. No, I, I don't know the girl. So, like... You don't have to know her. She'll be a good uh, wife. Well... Put it this way, if you don't marry her, nobody gets the cert. Um, well, I don't care about the cert. Uh, so, not gain then. Uh... Bertha? Bertha. No, I think I'll skip it. Okay, not gained. Okay. Um, three gnomes, uh, look to be priests of God. Um, Okay. Uh, let's see here. Monta comes back from her break. 
Pearl sends her over to your table, and she'll give you the following info. She has seen the two men, Augustine and Romilla, down in the before. They come in every day, sometimes Sometimes they come in alone, sometimes they come in with other people. She doesn't know who the other people are, but she can tell you that Augustine and Romilladon are lousy tippers. Uh, for the past two days that they've been coming in, they've asked for bottles of wine to make sure that they would be perfect for meetings that would have in tavern with special guests. Uh, after bringing in the bottles of wine, she left to tend them with, with the other customers. Can, uh, um, what's the normal clientele <laughs> look like in here? Sailors, for the most part. What was that? Sailors, some adventurers. So people are in here are like armed and have equipment? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that's not good. That was not good. No, it wasn't. <laughs> okay. Um... So we uh, we're out. I think we're out. We're all set. Yeah. Then. We just... yeah, we have the. Uh... So pretty much, we know that they're going to be going to a warehouse. Uh. Okay, guys. <laughs> Feeling better? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. What um? Well, um, what they're going to the house for what? Well, actually, uh, is you're pretty sure that um, they've been taking the kidnapped people back to the sleepy dwarf somewhere. Okay. All right. Sleepy so dwarf, that. sleepy drawer. Sleepy dwarf, <laughs> sorry, the glittering star does. I prefer the sleepy dwarf. Yep. <laughs> so, heading back there. And coming in. To the glittering star dust. As you walk in, you see four people stand up, grab weapons, oh. and prepare to attack you. Two of them are clearly Augustine and Romilladan. Okay. Okay. It's the initiative, guys. Hi. So Kuro's going before me again. Yeah, all right, all right. Ooh, I'm going pretty fast. There you are.
Okay, Declan is going to be going first. You still have to roll for Aurelian. I know. We're up, babe. It's my job to remind you, remember? <laughs> yes, I know, dear. It's a lousy job, but somebody's got to do it, babe. <laughs> Sheldon! <laughs> <clears throat> okay, here we go with Aurelia. And more rope. And a wizard. I can't believe that. <laughs> okay. Well. Well, hold on here. Thank you. Hold on. <sighs> okay, hold on here. Let me go down here. Okay, Declan will be going first. Okay. Um. Well. You so, got Giuseppe, uh, you got Kurt, you got Augustine, and you got Ramiladan. Yeah, both uh, these two are the ones we really want, right? Yes. Are, is either one of them female? No, they are male. Okay, good. I didn't want to, you know, I'd probably get a girl second. Um, I guess I'm just going to, I'll start with Augustine. Okay. Whack a doodle. Yep, let me. Oh, didn't need one button. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, they are AC 20, so your second attack, actually, but they're flat footed, so your second attack will hit. Okay. Seven, ten, twenty-two, uh, thirty-two, so three, six, four, three, five, um, forty-five, forty-eight, fifty-one, fifty-four, uh, sixty-four, fifty-nine. Seventy nine, eighty one, and then the hasted attack hits, and that's the damage alone. We'll take him out. Nice. Uh -huh. He didn't like that. Of course, he, he didn't. <laughs> he you. Bring it on, buddy. He just walked around. He's going to get smashed by Terlana and Aurelia. <laughs> oh, yeah. Believe me, we know. And he missed. Okay, Sakura. Uh-huh. Okay, give me just a second here. Hmm. don't think I oh. would... I don't think it would be appropriate for me to launch a flame strike in the middle of this place here. No, it wouldn't. Okay, so... Much as you'd like to.
So I'm gonna cast something that I normally don't cast here. Here, especially against this uh, man who uh, tried to uh, claim himself a uh, follower of Mistra. Yeah. What person? Wow. Okay. Wow. DC 22? Uh, it's, it's only a 20 you can get that. Notification. Okay, he sailed. <laughs> Carolina? Yes, sir. You can either kill this held person right here, or you can actually go here, up here and do one attack on this guy. Okay. She moved, she I think moved I want to murder somebody right now. She moved here, 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 here. She could sneak attack this dude. She could sneak attack him, but she could sneak attack him anyways because he's held. Oh. Yeah, yeah. What am I talking about? <laughs> so actually, if you wanted, Terry, if you want to kill this guy? Yep. Do a wheel. All right, here we go. Uh, uh, 38. Yeah. We'll just call him gone. With call all, him bye-bye. <laughs> with all sneak attack damage you do. I mean, you do 36 sneak attack with your Crimson Blade Draw Sword. Okay. <coughs> Morova will come over here. Step up next to Declan. I have not used this spell yet today. Okay. <laughs> DC 24. He needs to make a fort save. DC 24. He didn't make the fort save. DC 24. Oh. And he just took 130 damage and dies. Oh dear. <laughs> Oops. Welcome to Finger of Death. I'm gonna leave that thing up there. Oh. I'm leaving it up there. He's dead. Which means Aurelio will move up. That's all I'm saying. It's ugly. <laughs> okay. If you guys want, Aurelia and Giuseppe will beat on each other for a while. Go for it. Sure, why not? Okay. And Giuseppe, I can tell you right now, will need 20s. So let me just roll D20 and see what we get. Not 20. Not a 20. Okay. Aurelia. We'll now go for more. Oh, and how about three crits? Damn, and they're back to back. Yeah. First, second, and third attack, all critted. Yeah. Okay. So, 18 and 15 is 33, 43, 51, uh, 61, 69, 
Uh, so yeah, okay, he's dead. <laughs> Chopped liver. Okay. Now you notice that Kurt is still on the board, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Rise and walk, my son. Oh dear. And Morova did not just um, pop animate dead. Marova did this. Marova does what Marova does. <laughs> yeah, but at that moment, I also realized that yes, we are still in the city there, and we might have to have a little talk. Don't worry, don't worry. I'll, I'll destroy him when we're done. Okay. He's the ghoul. Oh, goodness. And I believe a ghoul normally has like, what, 20 something hit points? Yeah, something like that. It's not much. I'll call it 25. Okay. And, um, copy. And, of course, um, we, there's a blood trail here, and we follow the blood trail. It goes through the kitchen. Down the stairs to a room with a locked door. Guess what? We have a key. We have the key. All right. We head down here. And they we sending Kurt going. And they go, hi Kurt, what's going on? <laughs> Damn Kurt, are you a little drunk there? And so No, he's a bit of a zombie. Uh, we bring I, these guys in. I can relate to that uh, content. Uh. Now remember, we are underground, so we don't give a damn about uh, preserving the, um, you know, the. Um, State of the room. <laughs> the state of the room. <laughs> we can blow it to smithereens if we wish. Oh, by the way, before we came downstairs, seventh level pearl, third level pearl, sixth level pearl. Nice. Wow. Dang. Yeah, I got my spells back. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good. Okay, boys and girls, we are going to be doing initiative. Initiative. Right. Um, ba -ba -ba. <coughs> Turn that off. Uh.
And down here are William and Ruby. Also down here, tied up in one of the room, is Chester and Mark and Jordan Sherblade. Holy crap. All right. This is going to be an ugly, ugly looking. Okay, that's it. I just want to slice and dice somebody. <laughs> oh, you're going to get the chance. Believe me. Okay, Boris and Adam. <coughs> Five dot oh four. <laughs> What's the natural one? Yep. Adam. Thirteen dot oh four. And Ruby <coughs> Dennis, you need me to take over for a bit or are you good? No, no, no I'm good, I'm good. Just turn. Okay. Uh, let's roll Aurelia. <laughs> that sucked. And <coughs> everybody else is already rolling this show, right? Yep. Look at Marola. He's a speedy Gonzalez now. Okay. So he's going after me. I'm starting off with Tawana. Oh, fun. And I'll take whichever one I'm closest to. Okay. Terlana? Yes, sir. You are closest to him. Single or dual? Actually, you know what? You can go up there. Dual. Actually, you're closer to two of them. You can either do this one or this one. I'll go with the up. The one up here? Yep. Okay. That. Jesus Christ. What? Um, hit, 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 and miss. So, but I can tell you right now, just from the sneak attack damage, you are killing him. So he's dead. Goody! <laughs> Kira? I like murder. Um, Kira, uh, let's see. Well, I guess she can... Shit, man, if she centers it right here, she can just mash every one of them. Yep. 
Go for uh, it. If you won't get Charlana. Okay. Okay. Oh, she, she won't get this guy either. Well, that's... That's the ghoul, Kurt. Yeah. But you can I get don't... him if you want. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if he'll be in it. Okay. Uh... Oh, yeah, I guess he would. It's 24 20 radius, seconds. right? Right from here to this corner? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not only that, you'll have to... Um... Uh, you'll have to not include Declan, Maroba. Yeah. yeah, she don't include any of us except Ghoul Kurt. She she'll let him get burned up, and then she'll just snicker or giggle at Maroba. All right. Okay, so go ahead and go ahead and cast a flame strike. Yep. Uh... Okay. Flame strike for thirty six damage. Okay, I will do Adam. Well, let's see. Adam's gone, but Boris. Uh, Initially, I was going to go with Boris, but I chose Adam instead. Remember? Mm-hmm. Okay. So Boris fails to save and takes thirty six. Ruby fails to save, takes thirty six. William. Death no. fails to save. Yep. Take 36. Ow. Matilda. Um. It's gonna suck. <sighs> Matilda makes a save, takes no damage at all. Damn. Rogue. When Rogue sees what happened with Matilda. What happened to uh -huh. her? Oh, Ma uh, Matilda dodged. No, she used evasion on the uh, flame strike and took no damage. Okay. The ghoul so, did it. Oh, and he's the ghoul's dead. <laughs> he failed. Um, oh, bye bye. <laughs> Marilla saw what Matilda did. And didn't then, like it. Okay, <laughs> dodge this. <laughs> Let me do the attack. Okay, yeah, that hits her tough JC. And she now needs to make a fortitude save. And her fortitude save sucks ass. <laughs> Worse than mine. Plus five. Yeah. And she takes 95 points of damage and becomes a little pile of dust. Kira <laughs> <laughs> calls down the flame strike. Boom! And Matilda goes, Ha! Ah, miss me! And Rover goes, Dodge this bitch. <laughs> so, yeah, that's all it took. <laughs> Thank okay. you, Marova. Um, I can tell you, tell you right now, uh, Declan, of the two that are left, William here is wearing a holy symbol. Oh, really? Okay. 
Oh, who's he a priest of? Our knowledge religion. But you're uh, pretty sure it's going to be already from the handouts. Well, you know it's an evil god. Okay. Uh, Sakura can tell you it's Talona. Uh -huh. Talona, yeah. Okay, Declan, uh, are you going to shoot this guy somewhere there? Yeah, I did. I I had rolled before you had me roll religion. Okay, hold on. I'll I'll take. A, okay, there it is. Okay, hit 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 and crit and confirm. Uh, hit and hit. Okay. So let's do this. Bye bye. Twelve twenty two twenty three. Uh, thirty three, forty two, fifty two, fifty five, sixty eight. Uh, okay, yeah, well, actually, after the second attack, you kill him. Do you want your third attack and your rapid shot and then go, go to anybody else? Boris. Boris, okay. Okay, third attack is a crit, which confirmed. Uh, 13. 14, 15, 26. 46, 47. 57, 58. <coughs> okay. And I'll put, let you put your hasted attack on Ruby. 12... 17, okay, it's 20 points. Okay, uh, Sakura, there's one person left. All right, well, let's see what we can do about that. So I'll move to there. There, uh, excuse me, and... Don't tell me you're going to shoot arrows at him. Oh, no. Uh, I mean... These are followers of Talona. I reserve something special Wait. for such. The flame strike. Oh, much worse. Holy word? Oh. No. Destruction. Oh, brother. Okay, fortitude save. Yeah, DC Need 25. Mm -hmm, yeah. Okay, well, he can make it. But will he? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he will. Uh, so, Ooh. Okay, uh, he still takes a 10d6, though. Uh, give me a second, I will roll that. Okay. And that's probably going to kill him. <laughs> Yeah, that, yeah that's, that's, a pretty, um, that's a pretty good roll. Yeah, man. That that's a damn good, good roll. And you kill him. Okay. Um. Once uh, the battle is over, you can rescue the prisoners. Uh, of course, you want to destroy the altar to Tolona. Absolutely, I will. Uh, I have to do something to desecrate the altar. Um, pissing on it is a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're Sheldon. Okay. I'm changing your name to Sheldon, babe. Um, and as you are, um, as you are. Doing uh, this, this that's creating the altar after you've rescued the prisoners. The old man, Monty, remember the sleeping old man who was up in the room? Uh -huh. Yeah, he says, Well done. Unfortunately, it's all for nothing. You serve the gods of stupidity. Would you like to switch your allegiance to the one true god, Talona the Great? You don't have to answer right away, you can take some time to think about it. He taps his feet twice. Well, time's up. What's your answer? 
And if anybody starts to draw weapons, he says, that's really too bad. I thought, here I thought you were actually intelligent creatures, so I gave you a choice. You made the wrong choice. I guess that means I made a mistake too by giving you that freedom. I never made that mistake uh, before, but at least this one is easy enough to correct. Um, prepare to die. And as he utters those words, a blinding, multicolored flash of light appears between you and Monty. When your sight, when your sight returns, uh, you notice that other figures have appeared between you and Monty. <laughs> they are Clarissa Tupcast, who is the High Priestess of Tamora, High Cross Elliman, the Reverend Jedha Tear, Valis Stargazer Black Mantle, uh, uh, I believe we're calling bullshit on all of this. Put it this way. Four high priests and, and members of the clerical circle, including Rulon Dayspring, who then begins say, uh, talking to them. These individuals are under our protection. To, ar to harm them, you'll have to go through us. Monty looks up to figures and says, Okay, fine. You want them? You can have them. It's like having our own Patronuses. Make sure that they real make sure that that one pointing at Sakura realizes that she's been marked by me. And with that, Monty vanishes. Um, Sakura <coughs> and the rest of you, you've done the gods proud. Sakura, you've also made an enemy of Tolona, the Lady of Pain. Watch your steps. Um, that was Tolona's avatar. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, and thus ends the module. There's actually a lot of certs in here. <laughs> okay. Uh, we didn't... Okay. We'll start this right off the bat. None of us, uh, um, the potion to cure serious wounds. Um, party? Party, party treasure. Okay. <laughs> You're gonna like this one. There's some actually decent, um, some decent uh, role playing items in here. Do they include whips and chains, babe? No. No. Oh this darn one, it! This one is a jewelry box. When the cover of the box is open, there's a mirror as well as a continual flamestone. Anyone looking at the box when it is open will be blinded for three rounds by having the bright light shown in their eyes. It also has a button that you push and a secret compartment opens up to hide the real valuables. It cannot be used as a weapon in combat and it's worth 1500 gold, but does anybody want it? Not really. No. Uh... Aurelia will take it. <laughs> Remember, Aurelia is the girly girl. I was going to say, leave it to the girly girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dennis, I've got something for you, dude. Oh, what? Okay. Uh, you were going to vote that. Okay. 
I had to. The next tool item is a pair of dolls. These dolls are in the form of a small boy and a small girl. Each of the dolls has a button on its back. Pushing the button causes the gears inside the dolls to turn, and they will walk around following their owner for one hour. They will talk. Each of them has one phrase. The little girl doll says, I love And the little boy doll says, let's kick some butt. <laughs> they keep on repeating the phrase over and over until they're turned off. Pushing the button again turns them off. They can be used for one hour per day, and they're worth 500 gold. Does anybody want a pair of dolls? Uh, no. Nice. Okay, no. I'm gonna take the dolls. She thinks they're cute. Okay. She would. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Page two. Uh, this we are probably going to sell since everybody's got something better. Uh, set of braces of armor plus two. Oh, sell that. Yep. <laughs> there are two pinches of dust of disappearance. Uh, I'd like one of those. One, I don't need it. Yeah, that, that's one, sir. It's one, sir. I have the spell. Party treasure? Yeah. Yeah, or Tarlana. But, yeah, party treasure's probably good. Okay. And the potion of heroism. Hmm. Probably party again, I guess. What? Yeah, it's not hero's feast, but heroism. Just... Okay, page three. There is a set of full plate armor plus two. I don't think anybody yeah, wants it. Uh, Aurelia is no. Yeah, she's got that. she's got better already. Yeah. So it's not. There are at least one, two, three jars of restorative ointment. I can probably charge for that. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> you're gonna love the you're gonna love it with coming up, Chris. Yeah. So will Tolana. What? Well, something you can use your um something you can use your uh use magic device on. Ooh. What is it? What spell does Merov always cast? <laughs> well, take your pick. Okay. There's a one to fireball with 50 charges. I'll take it. <laughs> okay. There is... Now, I need to open up this uh, thing because I want to take a look at what actually this thing does. Um, so let me open up the source book. It is a short sword. Uh-huh. Plus two of backstabbing. Okay. Uh, um, magic arms and armor. Specific magic weapons. Okay. 
God, New York's governor doesn't know how to keep his dick in his pants, does he? Oh. <laughs> He's being accused of sexual harassment by a second former aide. Christ. He was already being accused by one, but now there's another just came to light. Of course, he says he never said or did anything inappropriate. And what's even worse on his end is that his brother, who used to be okay. a newscaster um, and works for CNN now. Backstabbing thing just allows you to do max damage on sneak attacks. He's the only guy that does that. Yeah. So I take it with a cell list? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then finally, on the final page, mm -hmm. nobody got the marriage to Bertha. Oh. Sakura. Got the displeasure of Tor of Tolona. Good. <sighs> the holder of this certificate was involved in the thwarting of Tolona's plans. The possessor of this certificate must inform the judge when he sits on the plane and met blah blah. Right. And he follows that Tolona and Maja will target all their attacks at Sakura yeah. until they are dead. Oh, so I am a tank now. Yes. You also have a kind of fitting 10% chance of being ill at the beginning of each event. Oh, jeez. Mm. This gives a penalty of plus one or, or minus a penalty of one or 5% to every dice roll. Yeah, um, you are at a minus one on penalty on all saves versus poison and disease. You automatically fail any save against a, a poison on the natural one or two. Uh, I we can if you want we can remove this curse. Shit, you could remove this curse. You're a 13th or 14th level caster, right? 13th, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> a remove curse, cast at 12th level. Yeah, let's get rid of that. <sighs> but... Yeah. <sighs> okay, Chris, come on, wake up. <laughs> and then finally, Maroba got one of his high end items. Uh, what did he get? There it is. It is a slotless item, and it is a spell focus. Spell focus. Uh, of deflection plus five. Oh jeez. It pretty much takes the ring in place of a ring of protection, but you can also use it as a spell focus. Right. So. All right, uh, I think that's everything then. Um, All right, well, I'm going to go ahead. Today is Sunday, so <laughs> next week's module will be Saturday, which I'll be at the wedding, so you'll run Trelana for me. Yeah, we'll be on Saturday. And next week's module is going to be called The Copycat. And Hulk. Written. By Robert Weiss. Mm, nice. No, guys, An I... old enemy and a new enemy, which causes the most trouble for Raven's Bluff. Venture of it for characters oh, draw rolls 14 to 16, and it will cost one day unit. Okay. Um, today's module will cost one day unit. I will have to go ahead and figure up the gold pieces. Okay. Uh, expect me to send the I know, Dennis, you want to get back into bed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, uh, I am going to get some rest. I will. Get I some will. rest. Met up. Get better, buddy. I'll do my best here.
Matter of time. At this they have time. pint demands that you get better. All right, all right. <laughs> Guys, I'll we'll see you all later. All right. Yeah. Okay. Talk to you on Saturday. All right. <sighs>